Hi there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com here with a popper video discussing the cards from Ultimate Masters that were downshifted to common and are now eligible in popper. We have some goodies here. I think the vast majority of them do have some sort of implication and we will see them eventually see some sort of play in popper. There are only a few duds out of these particular cards. So let's start off with Arena Athlete. Arena Athlete is a 2 mana for a 2-1 with Heroic, and whenever you cast a spell that targets Arena Athlete, target creature and opponent control cannot block this turn. So I like Arena Athlete because there are already two decks that this currently does or will go into that do have like a Heroic theme to them. One of them is an all-out red Heroic theme that runs a bunch of creatures like Kiln Fiend and the Immolating Solator and Seder Hoplite and uses cards like the Mutagenic Growth, Titan Strength, Apostles Blessings, Timber Battle Rage. And there's also a red white enchantment deck that uses heroic with enchantments. Uh, there's a lot of cards that you can hook up to a creature and then give them a boost. And if they get some sort of other uh, heroic trigger off of that, it's worthwhile. So I'm thinking like cards even like Infectious Bloodlust could it be, see play in a model red heroic uh, that uses auras. Uh, instead of spells this particular one that has seen the most play is more of a spell based one that tries to get team or battle rage and mutagenic growth for a one one turn kill but i'm thinking a tempo one with the arena athlete is is viable now because they're not going to be able to block you put something like an infectious bloodlust and then something can't block that turn uh there are also some like the cartouche that's good there's a, a card uh, another uh enchantment from back in the day that's one red that it gives plus almost one and another target a creature can't block when it comes into play so that's two creatures that can't block i can definitely see some sort of aggro version uh happen with the arena athlete so i think this one's a good one and i think eventually we're going to see some decks start showing up with arena athlete what I don't like about Arena Athlete is the one toughness. This makes it very susceptible to the Electricery, which the deck is already susceptible with if you're running cards like the Acroan Crusader. And now not only do you lose your Acroan Crusader and all the cards, uh, all the, the soldiers that are generated from the Acroan Crusader, you'd also lose your Arena Athlete. The good news is, though, if you are running like the Cartouche Shroud or any other way that gives plus almost one, uh, the Arena Athlete will be a 3-2, but then you're still susceptible to Lightning Bolts and, and whatnot. I think the value is there, though, uh, as you can start getting the the Augur of Bulls is not being able to block for a turn, or even things like Gurmog Angler, or just big creatures your opponent puts out. Uh, there's a lot of walls. There's there's a lot of high toughness creatures that do clog up the board, and Arena Athlete is one way to get through them. The next one up is Kanker Abomination. I actually do think that Kanker Abomination is popper playable. So it is a 6-6 six, six for 4 mana. It's actually quite large for popper. That's one thing about when you have a set that is just commons. By the time you get up to the big creatures, we're looking like 5, 6, 7 mana for something that's a 6-6. Six, six. Now again, this has a huge drawback in popper because there's a lot of, of decks that are very, very heavy creature oriented. So you don't want to, to cast a Kanker Abomination into those type of decks. So I'm thinking maybe a Switcherui sideboard card. Uh, this is pretty decent in like in Stompy to hook up with a, uh, a Rancor. Uh, however... I think this fits best in something like mono black control because you are going to be running a lot of creature removal and then you're going to have your opponent's cards uh, dead and so it will come in with a 6-6. Six, six. So if you think of like a pestilence based deck or just a heavy heavy mono black deck, I mean the angler is often, you know, 2-3 mana for a 5-5. A five, five. I think that there might be some justification uh, for running the canker abomination uh, as a 4 drop uh, it's a 6-6 six, six for 4, and then kind of tempo out the board, make sure that your opponent uh, does not establish another creature at that point, and you have just a 6-6 a, a six, six that makes short work of your opponent. All right, then on to Demir Guildmage. I actually think this is one of the better cards in here because there is a nuisance called Tron. I like Demir Guildmage in two decks. The first one is a Pristine Talis Talisman. Uh, sort of go you have like the the you're running the 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 bounce land for Demir as well as the the pristine talisman so you're generating a lot of mana as is and this is very unique for this type of ability for popper there's not a lot of cards with activated abilities such as this uh, usually this is relegated to, to an uncommon and you'd be surprised when you're actually looking through the popper list there's not a lot of cards that do these sort of things and it's just a two two for two uh, you could put it in the black deck uh, mono black and at least it has the upside of of having players discard cards uh, but I think that's a, a high cost for one card at sorcery speed. Same 
same thing with drawing a card at sorcery speed, but the one deck I do like it is in Rainbow Tron as a sideboard slot to bring in versus other control based decks possibly, as this deck is very very good at utilizing mana, and therefore you could draw multiple cards per turn to dig for more uh, win cons, and I could actually even see, see uh, these this sort of deck be the win con eventually. Uh, you can lock your opponent out from... Uh, really stockpiling cards by making them discard cards. I don't know. I think it's a very flexible uh, sideboard slot for these big mana decks, and it has the power level is definitely there for Popper. Now, on to Fire and Ice. This is probably the most talked about or anticipated card for Popper because I think it does go very well in Scred Delver at the moment as a sideboard. The tap target permanent and draw a card is very relevant for a tempo-based deck where you can tap down a land, and the fire can actually split damage. So it deals two damage divided as you choose among one or two targets at instant speed. That's very, very key. We already have some sorcery speed ones that do a similar thing in the format at the moment, but instant speed. So I'm expecting to see Fire and Ice in the Is It Delver list as you can actually even see it in the Rainbow Tron list or anything else that has access to red and blue as this is going to be often two for one and worst case scenario you, you can tap something down for a turn uh, so it does even really good against like tireless tribe decks tapping something down forcing them to uh, decide if they're going to go for it that turn or not and it can give you more information uh, it's it's just a it's just tapping down that land is actually more significant than you think it is in this this sort of tempo based strategy uh, that uh popper often utilizes so i think of course fire and ice is going to see play in popper already in scred delver has a home next one i think also has a pretty good home in mono blue delver is foil you can discard an island card uh, and another card rather than paying its mana cost counter a spell this is going to i think actually even help tireless tribe out quite a bit too as I don't know, discarding another card though, Tyrus Tribe is big because you can't get that one shot. So I do think that though this is going to be utilized in uh, the the Delver based decks as just another counter spell. Ca ca casting it for four mana isn't that bad of an option. So basically, Popper gets its own version of a Force of Will uh, that you can as you're tapped out, still have something up to counterspell. We do have days. This sort of works like foil, but it's, they can just pay one to get around it. Foil is a hard counter uh, with no mana cost and is definitely going to foil some plans when people are like, oh, you're tapped out. Okay, I'm going to hold that up for days, and then it's a foil, and then they, you know, discarding an island at that point. And, I mean, it actually does work with, with days and Gush bringing islands back into your hand. So, I mean, it really works well with, with Gush, where you can Gush back two islands, draw two cards, and then counter a spell uh, for, for, for all those interactions are free right there. Like, so it's a, a Gush and a Foil, and then you get two other cards that you uh, can cast later on. Uh, so, yeah, Foil definitely is going to go in those decks uh, as at least sideboard options against decks you have to counter uh, pivotal cards the next one is interesting. This is Groundskeeper. I was actually surprised this was not a common before, but this, where this one gets very interesting is there is a card called Retrace or a ability called Retrace, and a couple of these already do see play in Popper. So we have access to like Siphon Life, we have access to Raven's Crime, Flame Jab, and the, the Sen's Enlistment. So I'm thinking that a, a card that Groundskeeper could be uh, a... A, an engine for a, a deck like this to return a land and then so basically flame jab is three mana to do one damage to a creature or player uh the sins enlistment is uh, uh six mana to create two uh soldier tokens the una's grace is drawing a card for five mana that's pretty bad actually raven's crime is a is, is making your opponent discard a card uh, for three mana. Siphon's life for five mana is target player loses two life and you gain two life. So I kind of like this in, in maybe like a tortured existent deck that also uses the 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 tree folk that brings lands back. And you can kind of have like a, a land based engine through the use of the groundskeeper. So I, I'm liking this card as an option. I'm going to try to build this will probably be the first one that I try to build around. Like I did want arena athlete. This one barely missed my cut in one of my popper videos of cards I wanted to get downshifted. So I'm glad to see arena athlete but Groundskeeper is a card that is very interesting to brew around. I think that these these recursion, tortured existent type decks that, that try to get a lot of value of discarding cards and then being able to get back cards. Uh, basic Land's not too tough with this deck, uh, and Groundskeeper is, is definitely a nice little engine. Does Dialect Trickery again, that's a liability, but usually the, the tortured existent decks are very resilient too. 
a lot of board wipes, you can get Groundskeeper back easily uh, by pitching another card with uh, Torch Resistance and getting it back. So yeah, Groundskeeper is on my, my short list for two-do decks for uh, Popper. Lotus Eye Mystics. This is another card that is interesting. However, I don't like the mana cost. The four mana versus Aramancer for one less toughness and, and ditching prowess is where I think you want to be. So this basically does the exact same thing as Aramancer, which does see play in Popper. However, like it gets a little more interesting with Bogles because the prowess actually triggers off of casting your Auras. But I don't know if that's going to be that relevant. Like I said, at that point is plus two power compared to Aramancer, but still has, and maybe plus one toughness, if you think about that for the short term. Um, and I, I just don't see Prowess and plus one plus zero being enough to push it over the top of Aramancer. So if you are running a, an all-out deck that is wants to run like copies five and six of Aramancer, which we already have a, a Custody Squire, they can also play that route. Um, then maybe go for the Lotus Eye Mystics. Uh, I mean, now we have we have three or four Creatures that do, do this ability in Popper, so it's real. I'm really looking at the uh, fonts of returned for a deck with like Lotus Lotus Eye Mystics and Aramancer. So in that case, maybe so. If you're just going to go, you know, more redundant cards like with with the font of returned, and there are also like the Angelic Renewal cards like that that, that have decent little combos uh, with these cards. Uh, but yeah, for if you are just looking for like like just a few copies of a card that does this ability, I think that both Custody Squire and Aramancer are just better than Lotus Eye Mystics. But, you know, the more the merrier for sure to work with with Popper. All right, so the first one I don't think is playable in Popper is Mammoth Umbra. Uh, five mana is very, very steep for this format. I get it, Vigilance, Totem Armor. I just don't think it's going to go in a deck like Bogles. It's just too high cost. Uh, you want to be winning by then. And there's just nothing else worth protecting a popper. So eh, this one I think is the, the least likely so far to see play. Next up, we have Miming Slime. I actually think that Miming Slime fits in, in Stompy quite well. And this might actually push a populate uh, type deck into existence because that's the problem with a lot of the pop we have populate cards like sundry growth and there are plenty of them uh in the the, the popper form at the moment but there's just nothing really good to populate uh that's like on curve and the slime could definitely be uh, a card that can go in it for three mana you get a create an xx green ooze creature token where x is the greatest power among creatures you control however if if something your big creature gets snapped or removed in response to this then it's going to be something weaker so i'd like it in a deck that is trying to get big creatures out and stompy can actually get some pretty big ones out uh, pretty early so if you hook up like an elephant uh this this actually now i'm showing you a popper list that doesn't even run the elephant guide uh, but a lot of them do run elephant guide i could throw an elephant guide onto a vault scourge for example you have a four four that it can make or i mean some of these tend to get bigger with rancors uh and bone splitters so i could see like a rancor bone splitter deck uh hooked up and then you can get the 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 slime to create a big creature for just three mana but i i admit this is a big stretch here with the slime because it is a liability for cards like snap cards like the, the, the vapor snag anything that removes it in response and but again i think this is neat for popper it's pretty powerful on the power level of of commons and uh, in the right brewer's hand i think we'll see some decks that are built around it Mode of the Unhallowed. I think this is a card that a lot of people have written off. However, I, I want to draw a comparison to this card, Flurry, Flurry of Horns. I, I admit, haste on Flurry of Horns is very relevant. However, I could see a very similar deck that is just like a blue, blue spell-based deck that also runs like Piece of the Puzzle. You can ditch it. Um, there are a lot of cards like it works with Deep Analysis and other cards that Careful Study uh, type cards that can throw a card that can then be your finisher later on after you've controlled the board and so this is kind of what i think of mode of the unhollowed the flashback for seven to create two 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 black zombie creature tokens if this was a resource you weren't even using to begin with that's just a free resource in your graveyard and that could be your finisher for these like these blue control uh, blue black control do nothing decks uh even creating this for four mana doesn't seem too bad to create two black black zombie creatures these do not enter tapped uh, like other similar abilities that create two two black zombie tokens so you can create the two and then later on create another two and that right alone is enough power uh, oftentimes just overwhelm your opponent remember that, that poppers are really one for one format it's a tempo based deck uh, where removal is very big and threats aren't that great so there aren't any overwhelming threats that have to be dealt with i mean for the most part and so a card like this actually has a lot more value than you would see it in any other constructed based format Another token generator that is interesting is Molten Birth. 
Uh, this one is so random. Dependent, though, I don't think it's going to see play. You can already get this effect for two, uh, guaranteed two for just one in a red. However, I don't know the upside for creating or for having this go back in your hand. So, I mean, this basically you're going to get an average of three cards with Molten Birth. There will be times where you can get crazy amounts uh, with Molten Birth if, you, if you're just lucky with the, the coin flip. However, you got to think this is three for three. We already have Hordling Outburst that guarantees that and does it just for the, the three mana. It's not six mana for three uh or you know whatever it ends up being uh so for that reason i don't think it's going to see play we do see some uh token based strategies like this one here uh, with this red white weenie with triplicate spirits uh raise the alarms uh battle screeches can even go in these particular decks and for that reason it's it's kind of interesting in these type of decks but i i think this is actually strictly worse than a lot of cards that are already in the format and for that reason i don't think the molten birth is going to see play Ophos now. Now, this one is definitely a decent sideboard option. You can evoke it for one, exile a card out of your graveyard. Once again, I think this goes in the Tortured Existence deck in the sideboard here uh, as a way to get rid of Ghostly Flickers or other or other cards that need to be taken care of uh, in these grindy-based matchups. So uh, it's, it isn't going to be any sort of main uh, base card, but it's a great little card you can recur, Tortured Existence. If there's any other decks that like read cards uh, going to the graveyard, if there ever is an Aristocrats type deck, evoking this for one, getting some value out of it, it also has Flash. So that's kind of cool with the Flash Evoke. Uh, you can Flash it in, and no, it, it sacrifices immediately if you just evoke it. So yeah, you don't get any value off of blocking or anything like that. But it's kind of cool you can Flash Evoke uh, for a card in the graveyard. So this is this is good. This is a great card versus like Ghostly Flicker decks. It's another another tool in the toolbox. It might you might consider this very weak, but some of these like like Mono Black Control, for example, or other even Blue Black Control, I think this might be an ability of just being able to flash in a two two creature, uh, and it is 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 relevant. So, you know, even flash die exile something. Uh, so flash block die exile something. That doesn't seem too bad. Yeah, I like this Lovels now. I think it will see play in various sideboards. And, of course, do like it in these kind of tortured existent type decks. I might throw it in, like, one of my Aramancer uh, decks that I have right now that recurs a lot of creatures. As the ghostly, prison, or ghostly uh, flicker decks are one of the tough matchups. And you absolutely have to exile that card. And this does give me a better access in trying to rip it out with what I currently try to rip it out with. Like, ostrac not ostracize. It's the castigate is what I'm using. Or if other ways, like the Relic of Progenitus. This, this, this card might actually just be a good substitute for Relic in in those type of decks so i do like the, the the snout i think it's a great addition uh to popper another highly anticipated card is reckless worm reckless worm arrogant worm the green version of reckless worm currently sees very little uh play in popper i've seen some circular logic decks with arrogant worm before like the basking root water root walla circular logic uh arrogant worm uh, however, I think Reckless Worm is better positioned because it's also in a, a, a color that already has a lot of madness. Uh, currently, uh, the Reckless Worm could go in a Tortured Existence type deck for uh, like a red Tortured Existence. So choose a creature and discard it, return another creature. So for four mana, you get a big 6-6. Six, six. We also have uh, Faithless Looting in red. So it's another four mana for a big 6-6. Six, six. We have Fiery Temper. There are a lot of mana based cards. I even think that an uh, Earth based strategy with black red might be uh viable uh we have uh the burning inquiry that exists in popper uh there is i believe even some other cards that from black that allow you to discard to do something and so all of those are pretty like the yeah the 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 uh the grave scra scrabblers uh so all of those are pretty good for the reckless worm it's just a little better position than the Arrogant Worm, in my opinion. I always find it funny. Oh, it's a 4-4, four, four, not a 6-6, six, six, by the way. 4-4 four, four with Trample. Uh, that would make a big difference if it was a 6-6. Six, six. I think the Arrogant Worm's power level is definitely there for Popper. Uh, but it's just been, the green's been kind of awkward. It hasn't been what green wants to be doing at the moment, where I think Reckless Worm does a much better job of, I mean, Lava Axe is legal, right? Is that a, a common at one point? I believe so. With Reckless Worm. And it's something, if you even have an, an instant speed uh, spell to get madness too. You can you can basically flash this in and 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 get value out of it as well. Another another much wanted card in Popper is another return a creature to the, your graveyard to the battlefield. Unfortunately, this isn't in black, and this makes for very awkward because we already have Exhum. Uh, Resurrection, of course, the target for Resurrection will most likely want to be Ulmox Crusher. There are, there are a few things in Popper that are worthwhile to spend mana to actually reanimate them. Ulmox Crusher is the, the big one. 
Uh, we could see some white decks that do uh, try to recur uh, the, you know, uh, white, white blue might actually want it just to even recur uh, some cards like the, the white blue flicker deck. I didn't even think about that when I was making this video that resurrection might want to be in the white blue flicker as just an easy way to return a card that has died like a, a mnemonic wall or a mole drifter uh, back from the grave to the battlefield. Uh, however, it, the format is quite steep for that type of ability. This this card is more like an Ulmox Crusher, but I think now that I'm thinking about it in 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 all reality, I think that's where it might see the play, uh, it, uh, like it's a one of in that deck. Yeah, one of is actually pretty good for a flicker. Even if it's even the Tron flicker version, that of course is a little bit easier on the mana. But the flicker deck has no problem getting to four mana, and if for whatever reason, like they have a lot of one ofs, like the in the main, uh, like the 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 Stonehorge Dignitary. If that happened to die, and oh, it's going to be a while before I can get it back. Uh, what is the other traditional methods they can get it back? Can they get it back? I don't think they can. I don't think they run a, a return a creature back from their graveyard. So yeah, in all honesty, I think I think that's where let's let's find a a a, a ghostly flicker deck, and I'll tell you I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So, um, kind of these blue white do no uh, blue white. Wow, how come one's not showing up? Not Jeskai control, right? Yeah, well, okay. So I don't know why it's saying Jeskai because they have Pyroblast on the sideboard. So this particular deck at the moment does not have a way to get particular cards back. So yeah, Stonehorse Dignitary deck. And I I, I think running a one of Resur Resurrection is, is actually pretty smart in this deck because Muldrifter can get it back and then he can really grind those out if, if for whatever reason some of these cards have died. Yeah, I actually do like that. That line of play it might allow you to play less of like these multiples of particular cards and huh yeah gets a lot of value with the mole drifter for sure yeah that's that's where i think it has the most most likelihood of seeing play sky Cal calvary no flying double strike don't think it's good enough for popper i i, I get it double strikes kind of rare for popper cards evasion with double strike it's just not the power level is not there that is as quite a high uh, mana cost for the, the format. Okay, Slum Reaper. This is another card that I think is a great addition. Uh, unfortunately, I, I wanted something with three mana because four mana, the difference between three and four is huge in Popper. However, this is the deck that I think that it fits the best in is this either Abs and Tortured Existence or Jun Tortured Existence or just any of these, these green, uh, black Tortured Existence shells as a way to have some action versus the, uh, uh the, the Bogles or the Hexproof type decks. So uh, this is probably just going to be a one over two of in the sideboard. I've actually used one called Abyssal Caretaker, but it was just so difficult uh, to make this actually worthwhile. Or Abyssal Gatekeeper. This is the card that I have used in Popper. Uh, it is put into the grave of a play. Each player chooses and buries a creature your controls. But it feels so card disadvantage bad because it has to die. And so that means you're going to have to be running a sack outlet. And then you also have to sacrifice another creature. So to me, that was the, the, the big issue. Like Abyssal Gatekeeper is better if you're playing like a, a way to sacrifice your own creatures and don't have creatures. Like if you're running a bone splint, uh, bone splinter, you can actually kill two of your opponent's creatures. But I know, I believe at that point they can just sacrifice the creature you're targeting. That's true. So Abyssal Gatekeeper is actually bad for even that interaction. So, um, yeah, I think that, I think four mana is a little bit steep for the Slum Reaper. Uh, but it's the best that we have at the moment. The 4-2 for 4 is good, though. You can always upgrade uh, by killing another creature that already wants to die and then have a 4-2 back. Uh, so I think this one will see play in various aristocrat shells. Okay, so Spark Spitter. We talked about Madness. I don't think that this card is good enough to enable Madness. Um, if it didn't have the activation of a red and tap, then maybe. 1-3 uh, is a liability with Lightning Bolt. Discarding a card to create a 3-1 that just lasts one turn. I don't think this is popper player playable. I think it's just too much of liability. Uh, again, though, it could go into like a fiery temper, uh, very aggressive unearth base strategy. Yeah, unearth, possibly an unearth deck. But if this is two mana or no activation, I could see this seeing play in popper. But but the combination of having this three mana and a one a red and a, a tap activation is making this a it's actually making this very improbable because even those unearth decks that i've played with in the past you want to be able to utilize your mana a lot more better than having to do an activation for a three one uh and again if it's on a creature you'd want the creature to be able to yeah so either way if there was no tap 
if there was no red mana cost or if this was two, I think it'd be playable. But as it is, I don't think it's playable. Now, Tethos the High Priest, this is one that I actually do think is very playable. Uh, and I think it's going to go on the sideboard of this deck, the Mono White Heroic, as it's going to give uh, a way against those very grindy based decks to get back uh, some threats. So currently what the, the, the Tethmos High Priest does is whenever you cast a spell that targets it, uh, you can return a creature card with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Well, happens to be that Deathblade Elite's a great one to bring back that has Provoke, or you can just bring back your Seeker of the Ways, your Acronian Sky Guards, your Sacred Cats. And if there is a deck that you need to grind out, sometimes the Model White Heroic is good at grinding out some aggro decks, and sometimes it's just kind of lackluster. Uh, this is a great little option. So I do think that this should go in at least as a one of in the sideboard for that deck, and is is very very powerful. Uh, gets better with the more cards printed. Both gets better with the more spells printed as well as, as more creature cards with converted mana cost two or less that you want to be bringing back. So, uh, yeah, very, very good card, I think, for Popper. Uh, at least another addition for those those uh, heroic base decks. All right, Vessel the Endless Rats, I don't think we'll see play. I understand you can get a card from your opponent's graveyard and you can add one mana of any color. Uh, however, I think that, like, Pristine Talisman is just better already. Like, no one's running Manalith to begin with in Popper. Uh, usually people are running their signets for this type of ability. And I don't think pushing it over the top by getting a card from a graveyard and putting it on the bottom is exact is anywhere where you want to be for. So for that reason, I think some of these be printed that actually it has to do with your bottom of your graveyard. Like if there's something broken that you can get a card from the, your, the bottom of your library, uh, into play, like a Grenzo type ability then I could see, Oh, put an Ulamox Crusher on the bottom. Oh, okay. Let, reveal the bottom card of your library and let's, and put it into play. Then I could see that seeing play. However, as is in Popper, I just don't think Vessel of Endless Rats is there. Uh, last but definitely least is Wandering Champion. It's completely unplayable in Popper. When deals combat damage player, if you control blue, red, a uh, blue or red permit, you may discard a card. If you do draw a card, it, it's got the reverse loot. Don't like it. I understand in a deck where you could control a blue card, sure. Three one is such a liability. I just, it's just not there in Popper. I mean, no one's running a three one. Uh, there, there, I'm, I'm sure there's even uh, more upsides. There definitely is. There's one with the first strike you can get for two mana. Uh, at the moment and so we want our champions cute uh this little loot reverse loot ability but it's just it's just not gonna be there for popper so hope you enjoyed this video from my popper overview there are a lot of cards you can see the vast majority of them i think we'll see play uh, a lot of interesting ones if i were to rank them of cards that i want to brew around it's definitely groundskeeper groundskeeper is, is is the high one i'll probably try a reckless worm madness deck that's always been on my radar uh resurrection will eventually get there and of course the slum the slum reaper i think will go in a pre-existing deck that i need an ability just like this uh foil is going to be very awkward for the format i think it might be even more warping i don't think that blue needed two more upgrades and i think they got the best two upgrades like fire and ice and foil are the only guarantees that they're going to see significant amount of play and lo and behold number one deck number one deck it can go it can slot really nicely into oh boy oh boy and the thing is like scred delver it didn't suffer from aggro but aggro decks did at least have some sort of game versus them but fire and ice is gonna be super super good against i might just even replace electricery uh, as killing even killing like two specific elves is pretty pretty f phenomenal at instant speed yeah that's rough and seeing the foil that's crazy they downshift cards and they decided to downshift two incredibly powerful blue and red cards <laughs> oh wizards ah uh, anyway hope you enjoyed this this or this uh, video this has been kevin with rogue deck builder thanks for watching